My name is Emily, and I thought I had finally found peace after years of uncertainty. I had settled into a comfortable life with my husband, Peter, and we were expecting our first child. Everything felt perfect, or at least that's what I had convinced myself. I was 29 years old, working as a freelance designer and living in a cozy apartment in the heart of the city. It seemed like everything was falling into place, but looking back now, I see the cracks that I ignored, the signs that something was off. Peter was the love of my life. We met at a mutual friend's housewarming party four years ago, and from the moment our eyes met, I felt an undeniable connection. He was kind, charming, and thoughtful, everything I had ever wanted in a partner. After a year of dating, he proposed during a weekend getaway to the countryside. I said yes without hesitation. Life after marriage was like a dream, a stable job for Peter, my freelance work giving me the flexibility I always wanted, and now the excitement of a baby on the way. But I was soon going to learn that dreams have a way of turning into nightmares. It began slowly. Small things that seemed inconsequential at first. Peter started coming home later than usual, always with an excuse. Work was hectic, he'd say, or I had to meet a client last minute. At first, I believed him. He worked in finance, after all, and I knew his job could be demanding. But there was something in his voice. Something that didn't feel right. I couldn't pinpoint it, but I dismissed it telling myself I was overthinking. We were expecting a child, and I thought maybe the stress of impending fatherhood was getting to him. But then the late nights became more frequent. He'd leave early in the morning, long before I woke up, and sometimes he wouldn't come home until after midnight. I began to worry, but every time I brought it up, he reassured me, Emily, you know how busy things get at work this time of year. Once the baby comes, things will settle down, I promise. His words were always so convincing, so why did I feel this growing pit of unease in my stomach? One night, I decided to surprise him by cooking his favorite meal, pasta with garlic shrimp. It was a small gesture, a way to remind him that I was here for him, that we could still find moments of normalcy amidst the chaos. But when Peter walked through the door that evening, his face wasn't the familiar, warm one I knew so well. Instead, it was drained of color, his eyes avoiding mine. He barely noticed the dinner I had set up. Not hungry, sorry, he muttered, walking past me toward the bedroom. I stood there in silence, watching him disappear down the hallway. Something was very wrong, and I could no longer pretend everything was fine. The next day, I confided in my best friend Rachel. She had been my rock through thick and thin, and I knew I could trust her to be honest with me. Do you think something's going on with Peter? I asked, trying to keep my voice steady. Rachel paused, her brow furrowing. Emily, I don't want to jump to conclusions, but you need to trust your instincts. If something feels off, it probably is. Her words hit me like a ton of bricks. For weeks, I had pushed down my suspicions refusing to entertain the idea that Peter might be hiding something. But now, I couldn't ignore it any longer. That evening, I decided to confront Peter. As he sat on the couch, distracted by his phone, I asked him directly, Peter, is there something you're not telling me? You've been distant, and I can't help but feel like you're pulling away. He looked up, startled, but then quickly composed himself. Emily, there's nothing going on. I've just been stressed with work. You know how much pressure I'm under. His explanation was familiar, but this time it didn't soothe my worries. I could see the way his hands fidgeted, the way he avoided eye contact. He was lying. I couldn't sleep that night. My mind raced with questions. What was he hiding? Was there someone else? The uncertainty gnawed at me and the next morning I made a decision. I needed to know the truth, no matter how painful it might be. While Peter was at work, I started going through his things, his drawers, his briefcase, even his laptop. I hated myself for snooping, but 
I couldn't shake the feeling that something terrible was looming over us. After hours of searching, I found nothing unusual. Maybe I was overreacting. Maybe Rachel was wrong, and Peter really was just stressed. But then I found something that made my heart stop. It was an email, sent from Peter's personal account to an address I didn't recognize. The subject line was simple. Tonight. My hands trembled as I opened it, dreading what I might find. The message was short. Same time, same place. Can't wait to see you. My blood ran cold. I stared at the screen, unable to process what I was seeing. Who was he meeting? Where was he going every night? My mind immediately jumped to the worst conclusion. He was having an affair. I felt sick to my stomach. How could Peter do this to me? To our unborn child? I had trusted him, believed in the life we were building together, and now it all felt like a lie. I didn't know what to do. Should I confront him again? Should I leave? My thoughts were spiraling out of control, but one thing was clear. I needed to find out who this person was and what they meant to Peter. That night, I made a plan. I would follow him. I needed to see with my own eyes where he was going, who he was meeting. It felt desperate, but I couldn't live with the uncertainty any longer. When Peter left the house that evening, I waited a few minutes before grabbing my coat and following him out the door. My heart pounded in my chest as I watched him walk down the street, unaware of my presence. Peter hailed a cab, and I quickly did the same, instructing the driver to follow him. We weaved through the city streets, and I could feel my anxiety building with every turn. Where was he going? What was he doing? After what felt like an eternity, the cab stopped in front of a small, dimly lit bar on the outskirts of town. I watched as Peter got out of the cab and walked inside. His shoulders hunched as if he was trying to go unnoticed. I paid the driver and hesitated for a moment, unsure if I had the courage to follow him inside. But I couldn't turn back now. I needed answers. I took a deep breath and walked into the bar, my heart racing. The place was crowded, filled with the hum of quiet conversations and the clinking of glasses. I scanned the room, searching for Peter, and there he was, sitting in a corner booth, talking to someone I couldn't quite see from my angle. I moved closer, trying to stay hidden in the shadows. And then I saw her. A woman, probably in her early thirties, with dark hair and a confident smile. She leaned in close to Peter, her hand resting on his arm. I felt a wave of nausea wash over me. This was it. The confirmation I had been dreading. Peter was having an affair. I watched for a few more minutes, frozen in place. My legs felt weak, and I had to steady myself against the wall. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. How long had this been going on? How could he betray me like this? I needed to leave before I made a scene. I turned and rushed out of the bar, gasping for air the moment I stepped outside. Back at home, I felt numb. My entire world had been shattered in the span of an hour. I didn't know what to do, who to turn to. I sat on the couch, staring blankly at the wall as tears streamed down my face. Peter came home later that night, his expression unreadable. I didn't confront him. I couldn't, not yet. Over the next few days, I tried to act normal. I didn't want him to suspect that I knew, not until I figured out what to do next. But every time he smiled at me, or kissed me goodbye, I felt a sharp pang of betrayal. How could he pretend everything was fine? How could he lie to me so effortlessly? I confided in Rachel again, telling her everything I had seen. She was furious on my behalf. You need to leave him, Emily. You can't stay with someone who treats you like this. But it wasn't that simple. I was pregnant, and the thought of raising a child on my own terrified me. I didn't know if I was strong enough to walk away from the life we had built together, even if it was all based on lies. Then something unexpected happened. One afternoon, while Peter was at work, I received a phone call. The voice on the other end was a woman's. Familiar, but I couldn't place it at first. Emily, she said, 
her tone serious. We need to talk. It's about Peter. My heart skipped a beat. Who is this? I asked, my voice shaky. It's Lucy, she replied, the woman I had seen with Peter at the bar. I felt a wave of anger rise up inside me. But before I could say anything, she continued, Please, just hear me out. There's something you need to know. I hesitated, my mind racing. Why was she calling me? What could she possibly have to say? Against my better judgment, I agreed to meet her. We arranged to meet at a cafe in the city, and as I sat there waiting for her to arrive, I felt a mixture of dread and curiosity. What could she possibly tell me that I didn't already know? When Lucy walked in, I was struck by how different she looked from the confident woman I had seen with Peter. She seemed nervous, almost guilty. She sat down across from me and took a deep breath. Emily, I need to apologize, she began. I didn't know you were pregnant. I didn't even know you existed until a few weeks ago. Her words took me by surprise. What do you mean? I asked, confused. I didn't know Peter was married, she admitted, her voice trembling. He told me he was single, that he was going through a rough time at work, and that he needed someone to talk to. I believed him. I had no reason not to. I stared at her, trying to process what she was saying. Could it be true? Had Peter lied to both of us? So, you didn't know about me? I asked, still unsure if I could trust her. No, she replied firmly. I had no idea. When I found out, I ended things immediately. That's why I'm here. You deserve to know the truth. For the first time in days, I felt a flicker of hope. Maybe Peter wasn't having an affair. At least, not in the way I had imagined. But that didn't erase the betrayal. He had lied to both of us, manipulated us. And now, I had to decide what to do with this new information. When I confronted Peter that evening, he didn't deny it. He admitted to everything, his face full of regret. I'm so sorry, Emily, he said, his voice breaking. I was scared. Scared of becoming a father. Scared of failing you. I made a terrible mistake. I listened to his apology, but I didn't feel the relief I expected. The trust between us was shattered, and I wasn't sure if it could ever be repaired. I needed time to think, to decide what was best for me and for our child. In the end, I knew one thing for sure. I couldn't stay with someone who had lied to me so deeply, who had kept the secrets that nearly destroyed me. I packed my bags and left that night, unsure of what the future held, but certain that I deserved better. It was the hardest decision I'd ever made, but it was also the first step toward reclaiming my life.